Brad is fifth in. Looks like it's Jeffrey. Let's see more people get excited. And a big go on. Oh, yeah. I'm a little tired, so I have to do that more for me than it is for you. But if you're going to have a big job, right, sit down. Thank you. My name is Jeremy. Uh, why should you listen to me? I don't know. Let's see. Social Security has failed. This summer, in order to balance the federal budget, they tap every penny uh, the federal employee pension funds. So now it's officially an IOU, just like Social Security. States, many states have already done the same thing. And in the next two to five years, every state will do the same thing in order to balance budgets. If you work for a company, you probably already been distributed laid off, or you're stuck in a 401k, which I call one of the best theft devices this world has ever seen, or Wall Street, and Goldman Sachs, and Chase can steal your money again, and then tell you it's going to get better, and then steal it again, and then tell you, I think the latest I saw is, you're not saving enough, you're not putting enough into your 401k. I know we've had losses over the last couple of years, and you really haven't made any money. So now you need to save twice as much and give us twice as much money so we can rob your ass and steal it too. That's really why you should listen. Because if you don't do anything at your job, or you just save your money and put it in the bank, or you put it in a 401k, they've proven to us that they do not care. I don't care if Democrat, Republican, it really doesn't matter. They're out to rob you, they're gonna steal everything. That's one of the things that gets me most upset. Follow me on Twitter, you follow me on Facebook. I literally foam with the mouth at least once a day with some other portion of the day stall when we had to bail out these big banks. So that's why you should listen to me. I've done over 400 deals in the city of Detroit. Not all of them successful, many of them very painful, but generally I have made money. Why did I start in real estate? Uh, I know many of you. You know where you're going through life, and you know you're doing something wrong with your parents, or you know other family members, or society has you on a path. And that path is get good grades, go to college, and all that. Well, I fell off that path. I joined the Navy. Then I got back out, and I got back on that path. But never felt right. No matter how hard I worked, I never really got ahead. Then luckily I met Gina. I got married. Something my grandfather always did was real estate. Now, he did old school. <coughs> I mean, I'm talking about he went and bought the lot. And he went out there by himself. They didn't even have those air guns yet. Hammer. And he built 12 houses over 25 years, all cash, and then turned them all into rentals. Sold them when he was 65 and retired for the rest of his life. Now, that's a hard way to do it, but it's a good plan. That's the only plan you have. That's not a bad plan. You can buy cheaper than that and you can build now, but you couldn't back then. That's a good plan. So I got into real estate. And boy, I thought I said that was some hot shit. <sighs> Background. I did not grow up in America. I moved when I was eight years old to Europe. My father was in the Navy. And I didn't come back to the States until I was 17, almost 18. And I was in a military environment, which means I had no idea what an economy was. I didn't know what real no cost in the store. Got the most of us do anyways and subsidized. But I lived in this little sheltered military life where you get a paycheck every two weeks regardless of what's happening. Groceries are always cheap. It's, it's like a fixed economy, like a planned economy. And I got in the real world and I got doing this real estate thing and one of the biggest real estate bubbles ever. And everything I did turned to money. Everything. I made so much money in two years, it was ridiculous. About $750,000. And I thought I was just, boy, I know everything. Fast forward, July 2007. Well, back up a little bit. Because I knew everything and I kept rolling my money, I didn't spend any of it. I really wish I would have now. I didn't buy a car, didn't buy a fancy house, didn't buy a watch. I don't care about any of that. I want to hit a certain number and retire. July 2007, bam, lost it all. I had $80,000, I was doing flips, I had $80,000 in houses that, you know, on June 30th were worth $120,000, and on July 1st were worth about $15,000. <coughs> Epic crash and burn. Uh, when stuff like that happens, first thing you do is wallow in your own misery for a little while, uh, which I did. I 
Yeah. And I probably would have gone to Walmart if I had more money. So I'm literally reading ramen and egg and tuna. And they'd already shut off our power at our house. Luckily, our gas meter was one of those ones in the basement. So they couldn't get in and do that. So at least we still had hot water <laughs> and we could cook on the stove. So I didn't have a lot of time to wallow. And it makes you figure out is how everything is stacked against us. Everything. We're, we're, we're literally like tuna swimming around in a, in a sea of sharks. And then I realized my mistakes and the mistakes I made in real estate. You're never going to get rich wholesaling or flipping. You're never going to get rich wholesaling or flipping. Seems to be what everybody wants to do. Like, Jeremy, that's what you do. Yeah, there's a difference though. I don't spend the money. That part of my business is a job. I want you to understand that. Wholesaling and flipping is a job. It's no different than a job you currently have. Now, if you're successful at it, <coughs> it's a decent six-figure job. It's a lot of work. It's like uh, if you're a lawyer or some lobbyist or something like that, 70, 80 hours a week. But I call anything a job where if I stop doing something and it doesn't pay me, that's a job. Wholesaling and flipping is a job. You cannot pay people to wholesale and flip. It's not possible. You have to do it. <coughs> so it's a job. So if you came in here thinking that I'm going to change my entire life, and I'm going to be driving that $80,000 Cadillac or whatever, and I'm going to do it on wholesaling and flipping, you're not, you're not really going to change your life. The comment that I liked was, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. That's a big thing. You will never get ahead is, is as you make more money, you increase your expenses. Right. The only way you can get ahead, regardless of whether you work at freaking McDonald's or your $450 an hour lawyer, is what you're bringing in every month should be significantly more than what you're spending. If you can't address that issue then nothing you do will matter. It's just when you fail, it'll be more epic because you'll leave, leave that West Bloomfield house and that Lexus payment and moving down with us to Detroit. And that's, uh, that's gonna be a little bit of a culture clash and that uh, you're not used to that. So, number one, like what, what do I need to do today? Regardless of what your budget is, I don't care how desperate the situation, if you gotta move back in with your mom, crazy sister, your brother, you know, your auntie that smokes four packs a day, doesn't matter. Whatever you have coming in now, you need to spend at least 25% less and start setting aside that money. If you can't do that, nothing else, what I say, is going to help you. Because that's the only way you get ahead. Because here's how I use wholesaling and flipping to get ahead. The biggest mistake I made was debt. Now I still have debt now, but I have an incredibly short-term debt, and it's structured much differently than it was before. I made it out of something in three months or less. Everything else, I own cash. The reason is tomorrow my entire business can fail. A place Sleep, electricity, gas, food to eat, and a real estate portfolio that will feed me and give me a comfortable income regardless of whether I work or not. I want you to imagine, not some fancy ass car, some big ass mansion, but wherever you're currently living, which is your real life, it's your real life. So quit getting on the internet and typing that shit into YouTube and seeing with all these flashy cars and all that. Where you live right now, what if you didn't have to worry about paying any of those bills anymore. And every day you woke up, you could do whatever you wanted. Imagine what that would feel like. Think about that. You wake up anytime you want, spend as much time with your kids as you want, or your wife, play with your dogs, wake up at 10, wake up at 6, take a two hour nap in the afternoon. I don't know what she did do this afternoon. You went over and helped the neighbors in their yard because she's got bad knees. So 
is right in the afternoon. You can do you can do whatever you want. That's my definition of wealth. I still work hard, but at any point in time, for any reason that I want to, I can stop and go do something else. Forever for the rest of my life if I wanted to. Now that doesn't mean I'm happy with everything I have. I don't want you to think like, oh, living this little kosher life in Detroit, having your little single family home, you own know, cash, and all that. Although I think it's pretty great. I don't like my little slice of life in the I can do whatever I want. Side note, I think it's odd that one of the most corrupt and supposedly dangerous cities in America, I'm actually the most free. Because government's so bad, it can't do anything it said it's going to do. I can pretty much do whatever I want. That's pretty remarkable, <laughs> and I love it. It's like you're more American in Detroit than you are in D.C. You can't even pick what color you paint your house or the kind of roof you have. Anyway, that's a side point. Uh, <laughs> so here's a model that I think makes sense. Reduce, right now, reduce your expenses. Even if it means you got to move in, get a roommate, live with mom and dad, I don't care if it's for three to five years. Rich dad, poor dad. Robert Kiyosaki moved in with him and his wife. I can't remember if it was his mom or dad. Was, I think it was his friend's basement for like three years. That's pretty freaking humiliating, right? All your friends are like, you're a grown-ass adult. Then with your mama. Like, it sucks. Whatever, do it. Start saving money now. Start learning. Wholesaling is one of the best <coughs> ways to make money fast. So how do we all sell? Anybody know how to all sell? Raise your hand. All right, give me a tip. Buy something cheap and sell it cheap. That's one way to do it. Buy low, sell high. Yes. Find a property to sell, get it under contract, and sell the contract. Well, not sell, but negotiate with somebody else to actually buy the uh, contract and you get it. That's still buy low, sell high. Yes, buy low, sell high. Anybody got anything else other than buy those saw? Yes, sir. Market the property. Don't buy it. Don't put it under contract. Market it. You can do that too. Add so. Well, wholesaling, the point I'm getting to, wholesaling is an addition of value of some sort, be it more advertising, maybe additional exposure, creating leads that otherwise wouldn't have been created, and finding a way to make yourself some money doing that, or getting a particularly good deal at a great price where there's a gap between what they're willing to pay and what you can buy it for, or you can add value, buy it, rehab it, place it in it, sell it. Wholesaling is a fancy word for adding value to something, some way, real value, either by finding the deal, putting time and effort to make into the deal, or just being an amazing marketer and having a list of so many people, or knowing how to find the right person, that you can extract value out of that situation. That's all it is. I don't care if you don't have any money, no problem. No credit, no problem. People who are gonna lend you money are your friends and family. If they're not willing to lend you money right now, we gotta go back to problem number one. They're saying you being a fool at work, and a fool with your money, and a fool with your life, and you gave home one day and talked about how you want to do real estate and make all this money, and I want you to lend me $30,000, and they say, no, is that really a shocker? No, because you're being a fool with your money. Go back to number one, reduce your expenses, start saving money. If you're not already giving your best at work, and I know this sucks because most of these employers do not deserve you, they're basically looking for slave labor and the little, the least amount they can pay you to get away with it. They're happy with, regardless of the effect on your life. But I want you to work, come home exhausted from that job. Here's why. Your friends and your family are the ones, especially when you're getting started, they're the ones who are going to lend you the money. Now, if you're going to work and you're acting a fool or you're doing only what you barely need to do to get by, and you go, hey, I got this great deal. I'm ready for it. Man, look at this house. It's thirty thousand dollars. Everything else is selling for forty-five. I just need the money to buy it and turn around and sell it. And all they know you from is work. And they see you kind of, you know, taking the five, six breaks a day, 
Or you're kind of like, yeah, I'm going to push this off onto the other person. What do you think is going to happen? Think anybody's going to lend you money? <coughs> so if your family and your friends and your work, your co-workers, do not see you as somebody who works hard, who says that they're, they're, does what they say they're going to do, and adds value in situations, boy, it's pretty hard to get a start, right? Well, that's pretty much what's wrong. You've been beaten down by your employer. It's time to throw that all back and start. So everything I say from this point, you got to start doing that as well. Save money, do more at work, help your coworkers out, make your boss look good. That takes time. It's going to change everybody's perception of you at work. And what you're doing now is you're, you're basically a farmer. The rest of your life, you're a farmer. You're farming goodwill. You're showing people that you just don't talk. You walk. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen in a week. It might take six months to a year. But those are the people who are going to give you money. Here's the best part. After about five to ten deals, money's easy. It's ridiculously easy. People that I don't even know, I have a 35-minute conversation with on the phone, give me money. That didn't happen in the beginning, unfortunately. In the beginning, it was like this knockdown, struggle, flight for every penny. But after you get past, like that, let's say three to five mark, it starts getting easier. Because now instead of saying, hey, I've got this deal in Redford, I sit down and go, hey, look at the last five deals I did. Here's my bottom, here's my solid, here's my I my private investor. Here's my plan on this one. Is your money, is your money still currently in the 401k that's sitting in your bank account that's sitting in the CD? And this is a friend, neighbor, family member, or co-worker who's going to be working your ass off and save the money. Wow, all of a sudden it's really easy to get that money, right? So these are the things all the gurus don't tell you. There's not really hard money lenders right now. They're mostly dead. There are a few here and there, meaning if you have assets, lots of assets, an amazing credit score, a job that still pays well. Does anybody have that right now? <laughs> one, yeah, that's about right. It's pretty hard since the fall of 2007 to have <laughs> any one of those things, let alone three. Uh, then they yes, they will give you a loan, which pretty much means you probably could have done it with your money, but you're going to do it with their money so you don't have to use your money. Right? So this is the way you got to do it. Remarkably, this is kind of the way it was done in the Great Depression, too, which is something I've been fascinated with ever since 2007. Because let me tell you, when you lose everything, you want to know why. That's, that becomes your obsession is why. Is it something I did? Is it something I didn't do? Anyway, back to the point. Point number two, the world has changed, and it doesn't care about you. It does not. You can change with it, or you can die. It's up to you. What do I mean? When's the last time any of you picked up a phone book? Do you remember? Man, I, I remember. I pulled it off the fence, because my entire yard's fenced, and go, oh, it's another phone book. And I took it into my garage slash office, where I have this double barrel wood stove, I set the pile next to it, and for a week I used it to start my fires. Yeah, that's pretty much where that is. So how many people right now, be honest, I'm not going to make fun of you, it's more than a little bit. How many of you currently have a blog that you update content on at least once a month? Raise your hand. Not one person? A blog, a website. Something that you put content out, original content out, at least once a month. All right. Step one, go to GoDaddy or any of them. See if you can't get your first name, last name. <coughs> if you can't, see if you can't get a combination of that. If you can't get that, go more broad or generic. Then you can use either a WordPress, you know, WordPress.com, or you can go to Tumblr.com <coughs> for free with your own original domain name, set up your blog. Both take less than five minutes. And if I can figure out how to do it, you can figure out how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, go to Google or YouTube. I love YouTube. It's 
not, they don't just tell me how to do it, they show me how to do it. Big difference. Go to YouTube, set up Tumblr account with custom domain. Bam. There's somebody who's already told you exactly how to do it. Same thing with WordPress. If you do that tonight, which I would say less than 3% of you would, you're on the track. And do your first blog post. I recommend video. I'm recording right now. I've got four websites I create content for every single week. Why? It's the phone book. It's the phone book. There's some tricks and some things you can do to increase traffic and get your name further out there. But it's all pretty worthless if you don't have content. And while you're asleep, your website is awake 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If you do not have a website and you are not putting quality content on it, and by quality, I don't mean super high, you know, sort of video editing or anything like that. If anybody who's watching my stuff, you know mine's pretty pissed poor. Pretty much grab the camera, point and shoot, talk, upload. That's about all I've got time for. So it doesn't even have to be fancy, it's just got to be content. And put this out. But I would say make a commitment to do one post or video a week. And in six to nine months, you will be amazed. Now, I got lucky. I started this in 2008 when people were like, blog, what? And it wasn't even my idea, it's my old business partner, chair. But I learned something there. You put content out consistently. People find content. People contact you because they're interested in your content. You sell them something, you get money. And the only thing it cost you was a seven to $12 Domain name, custom domain name. And you technically don't even have it. You, you do a free like blog spot, but I would recommend starting your professional image right now. <coughs> yes, sir. Is there a particular camera or video tool? Anything. I don't care what it is. I'm not that bright. I'm not stupid, but I'm not a genius. There was never any point in my life where somebody said, boy, Jeremy, he's going to go far. He's a genius. No. It's not necessarily about doing everything right or having the best stuff. It's using what you have now. I like the Codex. But if you don't have $110, pull out your cell phone, record, talk, post. If you don't have a cell phone, borrow my cell phone or your friend's cell phone, can I shoot a five minute video and upload it? Do that. The content is more important than the actual quality as far as production value. Your content should always be good, it should be relevant. And it shouldn't just be about real estate, it needs to also be about you. So I don't know if you haven't noticed, but how many people trust big business? Anybody? We're, we're kind of like in this Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk crowd. Crowd, a good point. Pretty much starting about 2005, 2006, we're in this transition. And I don't know how long we'll be in it for five, 10 years, 15 years. I don't know if there's a way to tell. It might be shorter, it might be longer. Where old stuff still kind of works. Old stuff being billboard on the side of the road, TV commercial print ads, stagnant, official, corporate-looking websites where no person ever talks to you and it's just a company line. And someone like Gary Vaynerchuk, V-A-Y-N-E-R, Chuck.com, I highly recommend you go check it out, where he took his father's wine business from, I believe it was $3 million a year, to $30 million a year in five years, putting out a blog every single day about three wines that he was gonna taste test. So we're in, this, we're in this period where a lot of the new stuff works and a lot of the old stuff works. Let me tell you what direction we're going. We're going away from the phone book. I want you to think, when's the last time a billboard helped you decide what you were gonna buy? 
or a TV commercial helps you decide what you're going to buy. I know what you did. You were talking to your friend. And he said, I was looking for such and such car or such and such bread maker. And then he said, oh, my mama got this one and she really liked it or this one sucked and she had to go back and got this one. That's how things are going to go. People are going to trust people they like, know, and trust over these corporations. They're not going to listen to the commercials anymore. They're not going to do any of that crap. You should have your website almost just for that, where you can talk about things going on. You can go on YouTube. This guy's from Flint. No, I don't care. I'm um, black dude, Dimcat. YouTube.com backslash Dimcat. Go check him out. He has a job. And then every day, he's probably making about $15,000 a year right now doing this. But every day, on his way home or to and from work, he talks about some things in the news that are going on and his perspective. And then occasionally a book he's read and reviewed. And he's getting paid off YouTube ads. He's getting paid on Amazon for people who buy the book. And I think when I checked, he had something like 6,000 people subscribed to him on YouTube. And he looks about my age. I don't know, I don't know what his profession is. I've been subscribed to him now for about two months. And he's doing that, that's great. Just on YouTube, he doesn't even have a website. Just imagine if he had a website. You can just share your interests with the world. And then people contact you. That's pretty amazing. Personally, I am really into animal rescue. I post a lot of videos on animal rescue. People contact me back talking about animal rescue. I also do some homesteading about a decent amount of land where I'm at, or growing and stuff, and I have a question, I make these friends. So even though it might not necessarily give you monetary value, it gives you educational value. That's what I'm getting off the top. I do that all the time. So, yo. Did you get that uh, YouTube site again, please? Dimcat. D-E-M-C-A-D. D-E-M-C? Yep. D-E-M-C-A-D. Thank you. Yep. Black dude, I believe Flint might be Pontiac. Really very well educated, very well spoken, always picks interesting things to talk about. Yeah. Okay. A real quick commercial for the college. The second Thursday next month at 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we're going to show you how to build websites. Then from 6 to 9, we're going to show you how to build websites. So when you graduate, we're going to shift into another room, taking the next step. And we're going to do exactly what he's talking about. So next, second Thursday, come there. We'll show you how to get your, your dot .com, do everything, exactly what he's talking about. Simple. But you've got to come and take the action. Yep. So if you don't come and take the action, we're going to embarrass you publicly, okay? So it'll be a wonderful experience. So come on down. I want to give you a great example of someone who blew me away, absolutely blew me away with how effective he was in a very short period of time. I moved here in 2007. I went to every real estate meeting, you remember, for the first year and a half I was here. Every single one. Seems like all we did was drive back and forth between real estate meetings. I networked with everybody. I got to know everybody. What does that do for you? That means when I call, somebody picks up the phone. And I know what they do, so I got a deal I can sell it to them. A year and a half. DriveToFreedom.com. Gentleman named Todd Brittingham. Who had wholesaled as of last year zero properties. Who had flipped zero properties. Who only ever owned two properties. The one he was living in and the rental he had for the last year and a half. And he created DriveToFreedom.com and he set himself a challenge. I'm going to vlog every day. My goal is to make sixty thousand dollars in the next sixty days. And he blogged every day on his website. He did not make his goal. In fact, he didn't even get close to making his goal. Shit, it's hard to do that in sixty days. That wasn't the point. Now, a little over a year later, he's wholesale, I believe, over a dozen properties. He's got private money lenders off of it. And let me point this out to you: when he showed up at my meeting. I wouldn't introduce myself to him. He turned the whole paradigm around. Why? Because I knew he was serious 
I know how hard it is to come up with content every week. He just did 60 days of content. And when I said he put it all out there, and trust me, I'm pretty open, but I mean, he put it all out there. Every stupid little mistake he made, every wonderful little success he had, he was having a bad day, I mean, it, it was as Todd as Todd could be. It was amazing. And it was all in his car almost, driving back and forth between work. 60 days, he did that from a blog. He accomplished in 60 days what took me a year and a half to do. Pretty amazing if you want to talk about results. And it didn't cost me anything. You probably already have a cell phone that shoots video. And you go get a $10 domain and set up a Tumblr WordPress site. Wham, bam, thank you, now, you're in action. So whether you want to do a coffee business, do a video a week about your coffee, or you want to do real estate, or you're in the concrete business, man, wouldn't it be great to talk about the difference between six sacks, six and a half sack, why you recommend what, and back and forth, and why cheaper is not always better when you're thinking about how, I mean, you can do a video about that. And then somebody going, huh, like I did last year, and there wasn't this video, so here's a good market for you. What kind of concrete do I want? Is I just gonna put a new uh, loop in my driveway? And the city of Detroit was never gonna come fix the sidewalk, so I decided I was gonna fix the sidewalk in front of my house. I ended up selling on six and a half sack, even though it was more expensive. I wish you could have found a video telling me why in how eloquent fashion. A little market for you there. Detroit Concrete Company. How many people know anything about concrete? I barely know anything. I, I did enough research to find out it was probably worth spending the extra money to go six and a half stack over six. Let's not get too expensive. Six and a half bag is a cement is a bit of cloud. It is. So it costs a lot more though. But yes. I now know I have something that's probably going to last a lifetime. Right? It, I really over-engineered it. It's going to last. It wasn't just enough to get by. It's going to last a lifetime in the house. That's not beside the point. The point is. It's not even just about real estate. So even if you're like, well, I didn't really come in here for real estate. Such and such dragged me in here, and she's my ride home. Well, what do you like to do? Makeup? Go on YouTube. There's about six young girls, I want to say 20 to like 26. I can't freaking stand them. They drive me batshit crazy. It's basically little girls playing with makeup, going through every sort of makeup combination, and talking about useless shit like how to look like Lady Gaga. Something like 65 million views. She's making six digits off of YouTube alone talking about makeup. So even if you don't like real estate or whatever, you like something. There's something you like to do. Even if it's watch TV all day or watch soap operas all day, you get on review. Or maybe do like a three or four minutes and not. My point is, there's somebody out there who likes exactly what you do, and they're looking for it right now on the internet, which is the phone book. And if you're not out there, they can't find you. They need to be able to find you. If you don't do that, nothing else matters. Because that's the direction we're going. And unlike GM, or all the big box office stores that have millions of dollars they can throw at stuff that works marginally well, you don't have that budget. You need something that works exceedingly well with very low cash. Yes. On this website, you want to start some sort of automated marketing campaign. When I say automated marketing campaign, I'm not saying every email that you send out should be selling shit. My God. I want you to, who wants to be friends with the person? Hey, Jeremy, how are you doing? Oh, did you buy this? Did you buy that? Tools? How many times am I going to come up to him? Probably like once, right? So, I'm talking about touches. Quality information for people. You can use Aweber. I love Aweber. They give you the code. So, they come to your website, I don't know, drivetofreedom.com. And five seconds after you're on the website, or from anywhere that pops up. You give away something free. Like I have eight secrets to successful investing in Detroit, which is like the most basic stuff when I first got started here and you're not from Detroit. Things that seem obvious to you if you're from Detroit 
are not obvious to you when you're from Washington. We don't have a fast block with us. We don't have security doors. Didn't even know what those things were until I came here. So I kind of put some of the more obvious stuff out there. Hey, give me your email address. I'll send you a free report. And you're also getting my weekly newsletter. Now I have a way to contact them where I don't need them to come back to my site. I like AWeber, they have the highest deliverability, but there's eye contact, uh, there's a bunch, constant contact, there's a bunch of them. Once you want those on your website, they come, there's a way for you to automatically start collecting that information. Here's the great thing. You can go and write up 27 emails, put together a sales process, if you want to lead it down a path, I did this for mine, I have 27 emails. Basically, a lot of frequently asked questions. My target audience, international investors. Well, Detroit and America in particular is very confusing, so I explained it through 27 emails. That does several things for me. First of all, I'm constantly contacting them with no effort on my part. I only had to write 27 emails one time. I told AWeber when to send it out, so when they sign up, it automatically starts sending to them for the next 27 days. And I didn't have to do anything, except for that first time. Now they're getting relevant information. I am selling them nothing. And all 27 emails, I don't sell them a single thing. On the 27th email at the bottom, it says PS. This sounds like too much work for you, or you're not interested in doing this. I have turnkey properties I can sell you. Let me know. That's my entire sales pitch after 27 emails. But all the 27 emails were good information. Information I learned that I got my ass kicked in Detroit on. Why? First of all, <coughs> call me and pump me for information anyway. <coughs> so if you're one of these people that think, well, I don't want to give you that information. I worked hard for it. And all these people are going to steal from me. Yeah, they're going to steal anyway. They're going to call you up, they're going to pretend to be interested, you're desperate, or you want to believe it, or they're really good, you're going to give them the information anyway. The difference is you spend an hour and a half on the phone talking to the wrong person. Give it away for free anyway. They don't call you anymore to give it away for free, they don't waste your time. Then the people who call you, ah, that's somebody you should be spending time on. That's my personal preference on how to market, but anyway. You write up all these emails, you can do, I don't care how many free reports you do, you can be on anything, it all does it automatically. And now, we have a way to communicate with them on a weekly basis, and it doesn't require them to come back to you, which is very good. And if you put out quality content, they don't go away. And you can monitor this. It's basically people that unsubscribe to your list. You can see how fast you're growing, you start going down, maybe your content's not that good. So you can monitor that. You want to keep content hot. Basically, I want you to treat these people like, here's a bad example, uh, but like your mom. When are you going to sell something to your mom? Would you want that to be the best thing for her, at least in her price range? Would you want to know all the pros and cons to whatever you're trying to sell her, your own personal experiences about it. If you treat people that fairly and that honest about it, and you're that upfront about it, that's kind of how I approach my entire business. In fact, I talk to a lot of people that have invested in Detroit, because I know it's a bad idea for them. You know, Detroit's a, it's a high risk market, regardless of how smart or hard you work for. So, but anyway, so you got your, JerryBurgess.com, or your first name, last name.com, is set up on Tumblr and or WordPress. You're putting content out. You've got AWeber, or Constant Contact, or Ad Contact, any one of dozens of automated email uh, marketing places. Now you've got a base. That's your business in a box right now. I don't care where you buy houses, where you sell houses, if you're even buying or selling houses, you just got my entire marketing on everything I do. That's it right there. I have a website. I create content on this website. I have the ability to contact you. If 
if I want to from this website, I put out a weekly newsletter, which I do video because I have to create a lot of content. And uh, I don't have time to write. You know, I love doing it. It's 10 times as long to write something as it does to turn on a video and speak it. And that's how I sell. That's it. Take that video, create a YouTube channel. Why? Because you can make money on YouTube. You're creating this content for free to sell something. YouTube will pay you. Video hosting is expensive. You don't want to host your own video anyway. It takes up a lot of space, needs lots of bandwidth. YouTube will do it for free. And there's already a mechanism. You sign up, you get a certain number of views. It takes a little while. But then, once you have a certain number of views and a certain number of subscribers, YouTube starts paying. Now, it's not a lot. But if you ever start getting tens of thousands of hits, and you never know which one it's going to do, you can start making a lot of money on YouTube. The point being, you weren't going to make that money hosting it yourself, and it's going to cost you money. Now you have the ability to make money. Post it on to YouTube, and get you the code, the copy, and embed it in your website. It's dirt simple, it's easy. So now you got a potential source of income coming in from your YouTube videos. Also, Google changed the way. Mark, I'm sure, is always harping on you. Static websites are dead. Google doesn't care about it anymore. Websites are constantly changing, updating content, especially multimedia involving pictures and video, are higher ranked than just words. Here's a little guy. Do it. Put some video out. I can't believe all the corporations out there, Fortune 500, there's a couple who put out videos. You probably have searched Google recently and seen lots of videos start showing up, especially YouTube videos, because hey, they, they own YouTube. That shit's fixed right from the get go. They're going to pull that from instead of going to Vimeo, because that's their own site. Push your traffic there, right? Make some money off the advertisers. It's showing up more and more, same with pictures. On the Google search on the left hand side, as everything, pictures, video. Let's talk about social media. Social media. How many of you have a Facebook account? That's good. How many of you use your Facebook account on a daily basis? Alright, how many of you post that shit nobody likes to see about uh, like this or the kid with cancer or uh, the almost money? Yeah, nobody ever missed that when I asked that. It's okay. Don't do it, they don't really get the money, all right? Do you interact with your friends on there? Yes. Yeah, okay. Could you interact with, I don't know, business associates on Facebook? I do. I have a page for uh, my wholesale company. I have a page for my real estate club. And I have a page for my homesteading and gardening things that I'm doing that I love so much. And I interact with people on that all the time. In fact, it's a great way for our current customer to stay in constant contact with you. Because you know what? They're not really your customer when they talk to them once. I think they call that a one night stand. Get it and forget it, right? No, they're your friends forever. You want to take care of them forever. Because everybody's worth more than one sale. Besides, it's a nice thing to do. If you don't like a person, don't work with them. That's kind of where I'm at in life. If I kind of feel like you would have financed a slave ship 250 years ago. I'm not going to do business with you. Life is short. I want to work with people who value the same things I value and that I actually like to get along with. When the shit hits the fan, and it will, things will go bad. Let me tell you, I'd rather be working with somebody that likes me, or maybe hopefully still likes me, than somebody that I, you know, doesn't care how they make money so long as they make it. Twitter. Who has a Twitter account uses it? Get one. Google Plus. Ugh, it sucks. Let me tell you why you should do it. It really does suck. It's basically a clone of Facebook. It has a slightly different layout, but it's a clone of Facebook. Without the timeline. But here's the major difference. Facebook is not open to search engines. Let me repeat. Facebook is not open to the search engines. So all the content you share and post, it's only available to the friends you have on Facebook. And it dies there. 
Google Plus is open to search engines. And it's basically uncharted territory. Uncharted. People haven't figured it out yet. In fact, that's one of the things we'll be talking about in the next month's meeting at the Google Trek Messages. I absolutely hate it. I need one more thing to do, like I need a hole in my head. But it is open to the search engine. So it's a place where I can go post the same thing I was posting on Facebook for free. And the stuff I target is very, very local. It's very relevant to the people who care about it. And it's going to start showing up in the search engines, which means I get more traffic. It's the phone. Same thing with Pinterest. How many people are on Pinterest? Nobody. Oh my god, you gotta get on Pinterest. I just know it. Um, pin? T R E S T. So it's like you're pinning interest and Pinterest. It's a way to post pin, uh, pin pictures and videos. It sounds ridiculous. It is so addictive and easy. They were, they were talking about that on Fox 2 last night. Oh, here's the best part it automatically, when you pin something, you can only pin things from websites. Think about this. You can only pin things from websites, be it pictures or videos, and when you pin it, there's automatically a backlink to the source. That source is your website where you've been posting videos and pictures about things you're passionate about. Here's how this doesn't work. If you're just looking to sell something and you don't care about what you're doing, it's not gonna work. Let's say you love pit bulls. You rescue pit bulls, you train pit bulls, you love playing with pit bulls. You have, I don't know, 6,000 pictures of cuddling <laughs> pit bulls. There's other people like me out there like that. And I go and I pin these pictures on the Pinterest, and people looking for cute pit bull pictures or training pictures and all that, they find that, they go back to my website, I have some ads, or I'm selling something, or I have a, a store of some sort, Bam, just to give you an idea, this is, this is even more uncharted than Google Plus. Because Google Plus is basically Facebook, so you gotta do it twice. Pinterest drove more traffic than anything last month. More than Facebook, more than Google, more than anything, and it wasn't even close. Why? Because people are passionate about everything. What do you like to do? You like something besides selling houses? Oh. Barbecue? I like barbecue. I love barbecue. <laughs> I have a barbecue from that. I buy charcoal by the pallets. I can't even tell you how many barbecue pictures I have. I love getting those barbecue pictures. Check those pictures out. It's all about sharing. I know it doesn't make any sense until, see my next, my next door neighbor, he's a barbecue fanatic too. I can't tell you how many hours every week we discuss barbecue <laughs> and what we're gonna barbecue. And what we barbecued in the past, and how good that was. <laughs> when you're really into a hobby or an interest, and you find somebody else who is too, I mean, it's like a downward spiral. You gotta catch yourself sometimes. And that's what interest is. At first, I thought this thing was stupid, but I'm gonna go check it out. And I got sucked into it like that, like a vortex. And you're like, oh my god. And there's all these people who have these same interests you do, and every one of those links goes back to your content. Yes. So you don't use it for your real estate? I do. Oh, okay. I don't just use it for my real estate, though. Because okay. nobody wants to do business with somebody they don't know. And if somebody tells me all they do is real estate, I don't believe them. And I don't want to get to know them. If I just said I like doing business with people I like. And if the first thing you do is tell me if I hate hit balls, I'm probably not going to do business with you. That's the end of that. <laughs> I'm done. I don't care how much money you can make me. I, I'm not motivated that way, and neither are most of you, believe it or not. You'll say money is money, and then you'll run into somebody you do not like, or a boss you can't stand, and all of a sudden it's a lot less about the money, isn't it? That's about the fact you've got to get out and go to work with that boss you can't stand again. Yes, sir. You have a teaching video that teaches about the building. No. You don't have a website that's teaching? Uh, well, I do. I just started it. It's, it's real fresh. All right? It's uh, freerementor.com. Free, 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 free RE for real estate, mentor.com. I only got like six videos out there. Um, 
This one will be going up there too. Okay, you see a free RV button? Mintour. Mintour, okay. Mintour.com. And I'm doing that. Well, actually, if you go there, I'm not going to waste time on, on that. they will tell you why I'm doing that. Um, but you're a lot less motivated by money than you think you are. I promise you. And you're a lot more motivated by what you like to do and who you like to do it with. There's a reason why it's easier to go shopping with your friends than it is to go to work. It's easier to go barbecue or go swimming or go fishing than it is to go to work. Pretty much work sucks no matter what you're doing. I love real estate, but there are times, actually most of the time, it still sucks. Boy, it's a lot more fun when I'm doing with people I like. It just is, rather than people I don't like. And I would venture to say 99% of you are the same way, which is why Facebook has almost a billion people on it. Because people naturally want to communicate and reach out and have interactions with people that like the things that they're doing. That's why you don't see too many Republicans hanging out at the Democrat function. You see, like all the Republicans over here, all the Democrats are over here. I bet if you came over here, it's even more broken down. You know, the, the more lenient Democrats are over here, the far left ones are over here because they don't want to talk about them. And then that one's broken down even more. The socialists are over here, and the ones that, I mean, that's pretty much what we do. And it's natural. How would you like to get paid for what you do every day just doing it on Facebook, <clears throat> Twitter, Google Plus, Pinterest, whatever else comes out? That's the amazing thing. I have a friend now in Egypt who has a relatively well-established homestead where he's raising chickens and goats and things like that, and that's the direction I am headed. We became friends on Facebook. I started posting a lot of videos. He said, they're great. He's been doing it a lot longer. I said, you should post some videos. So then he starts posting some videos, and now we're friends, and we talk about just about every week. Well, not last week, he's been so busy on Facebook about our common interests. Turns out, by accident, he also invests in Detroit real estate. <laughs> Didn't even know it. Small ass world, right? Okay. Let, me, let me tell you if he contacts me about something in Detroit, how likely am I to listen to it? Boy, that's super likely. I'm at least going to listen to it. I'm going to look at it. Even if it was something I would probably never do, I'm going to look a lot harder at it than if. You said, hey, I'm doing something in Detroit. I have nothing to do. I have no, in no common interest that I know of yet. It's a force multiplier. Think of it like that. They drop the Great Marys off in Vietnam. They go out and they train 10,000 people at the fight. It's only 100 guys. Websites, social media, video, pictures, social media. It's a force multiplier. It is amazingly cheap to start a business now. When I started real estate in 2005, it took 50 grand to start a wholesale business. You can do it for less than 500 bucks now. And probably even less than that because cell phones keep getting cheaper and cheaper and coming more stuff. Mm. It is ridiculously cheap now. There wasn't YouTube. Think about that. There wasn't YouTube. Everything I do is YouTube now. There wasn't Facebook. Everybody remember MySpace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do shit because it's on MySpace. You're just done. You can even be friends on MySpace. That's what there was. There was none of this. Now it's all completely different. And you know what? In five years, guess what? It'll probably all be different again. The, the mindset I want you to have when you're going out and doing this. First off, you need to be in a phone book. The phone book is online. That, that needs to be content that you put out there. If you don't do this, it doesn't matter. If you're not saving money now, you're never going to save money. You're never going to be truly free. You're never going to be truly wealthy. Which is, as far as what I'm concerned with wealth, it's your time. Your time is your wealth. You can always make more money. I've lost a shit ton of it. You never get back a second of your time. That's where the real wealth is. Got to go out and got to do this stuff. Yeah, this, this may be a little up the I'm doing for that. I'm in by a leadership a ministry called Celebrate Recovery. And we want to uh, to, to venture out more online. Uh, Facebook fan page. page. Okay. Write it down. Facebook fan page. Just ask me a question. that was so important. You better write it down. What was the what was Facebook fan page. 
If you have a business, you should have a fan page. If you like collecting turtle stamps, you should have a turtle stamp fan page. Pit bulls, animal rescue. Yeah. I mean, you've been talking to uh, uh, other uh, associates, and then I actually came up to them. We've got a few people online. That's Facebook. Yeah. There are folks out there that want to help. There's, a, there's almost a billion people on Facebook. Uh, celebrate Recovery is, uh, is similar to NAA. Uh, and then we get this down the problem said it's Christian based. And we can't only just want, we don't only just want to reach people and not the park, we say. Uh, we'll reach the whole world. Right? Amen. Well, you know, Six degrees of separation. That's why, you miss you, didn't you? that's why Facebook and Twitter and all that work so well. You just about all your friends, or at least the younger ones, probably more of the older ones than you suspect, are already on Facebook. You join. Tap your email addresses. Bam. Yeah, we really want to reach the, the youth. Well, here's how Facebook works. You go out, everybody that's your friend on Facebook, that's your friend in real life, add them. Then start posting. Then go create a fan page. And share that fan page with your friends. Then your friends share that fan page with their friends. It, would it be it's all happens happen? instantly with the single click of a share button. What is that video a good idea? Absolutely. Yeah. All for free. You don't even have to buy a domain. You just need a way to record video. That's all I have. Okay, so. That's the future. Now, less than three of you are going to go home and do it. This bothers me like, like you wouldn't believe. If you go to freerementor.com, you'll see why. Why, when somebody gets up, and tells you exactly what you need to do. Why do you not go home and do it? It's a question I ask all the time. I don't have the answer. I don't. I don't think I'm any closer to the answer than I was when I started. I maybe have a little bit more insight. Insight number one. You think you're crazy or you don't deserve it, which is totally bullshit. You're not crazy. You don't deserve to be a slave. You deserve to have everything you want in life. And the only way you're going to get it is if you go out and get it. Nobody's going to give it to you. Liberals aren't going to give it to you. Republicans aren't going to give it to you. The church isn't going to give it to you. Your family's not going to give it to you. You deserve it. You can have it. You go out and build it. So kill that thought in your head right now. That you don't deserve it, or you can't do it, or you're not worth it. You are. Number two, your family's all going to do the same thing. They're all going to say the same thing. No, not because they don't love you. They don't like you, or they don't want you to succeed, that's a very small percentage of people. The idea, even now, is so foreign, they only want the best for you. They recoil in horror that you're going to go out there and basically live and die by what you do. Because that is my business. I don't participate in the traditional economy. I don't qualify for food stamps. Medicare, Medicaid, anything. And when they come out and they try and get me on Obamacare, I'm going to get out of that thing too. It also means that if I get hit by a car, I'm on my own. That terrifies people. Let me tell you. If you get hit by a car, you're on your own anyway. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what everybody's not telling you. Yeah. Republicans and Democrats, that's what everybody's not telling you. They're all fighting. They think they're fighting for you. They're not. Banks get more money, competition gets shut down, you get robbed, and if you get anything at all, it won't be what you need, probably, and you'll die in a single bedroom apartment, like my grandma did, and she died in 1992. Or 20 years since then, think how bad that is. So you're going to die that way anyway. Nobody's going to look out for you anyway. But the idea, I want you to imagine this, the idea that if you screw up, there's nothing to catch you. <clears throat> it's so foreign and abhorrent to people, unaccustomed to it, that in order to help you, they will do anything they can. You gotta ignore it. And you're gonna fall, and you're gonna hurt yourself, no doubt. And in fact, you probably at least once or twice fall and hurt yourself so bad, you don't know if you're gonna get back up. Truth. No matter what I say, I can't teach you everything. 
Because it might all change in a year. That's how fast things are moving. There wasn't YouTube or Facebook or any of that crap when I started this. You gotta keep up on it. So that's another reason why you're likely to go home and not do it. Number three, the TV. Fuck, get rid of cable, shoot your TV, throw it out, you don't need it. It is the best mind-washing mechanism in the history of the world. <laughs> Lyndon would have given his left testicle to have the TV for what he had to do to accomplish the same thing. The average American watches five hours of TV a night. Oh my God. There's nothing on TV worth watching. The news, they lie to you anyway. <laughs> Why watch it? I want to know what's, the, what's going on. You don't know what's going on. They're lying to you about what's going on anyway. Why waste the time with them? Guess what? You get hooked like Gina and I do on CSI, you can actually like get the whole season, <laughs> rent it, spend an entire weekend watching it on your, uh, on your computer. <laughs> and no, you, you get 20 minutes of your life back every episode because there's not a single commercial. It's wonderful. Kill your TV. It's too easy. You had a rough day. You come home. You sit down. You flick it on. You get sucked in. Do whatever it is. And there's some good shows. Trust me. I know. We also like uh, NCIS. Oh, that's a good one. I know it's stupid, but it's so good. Right? <laughs> Download it offline. Rent the DVD. Get rid of your damn TV. Start reading at night. Books. There's a reason why our public education system sucks. We want you to be stupid. There's a reason why, even on welfare, you can have TV. They don't want you to think, or God forbid, go get a book. There's a reason why they want to shut down the Detroit Public Libraries. Damn it, you can't have them going and reading. They're going to read, they're going to get us out of the office and realize we're screwing them. Do that. Go home, read. Get rid of your TV. Because everything on TV is going to be, all oh, this failed, that failed, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's even true, but man, you don't need that. You already got your mind trained telling you, I can't do it, I need to go this, I don't deserve it, I'm not worth it. Then you got your family and friends doing the same thing because they're scared to death for you. Really, they're scared of themselves, but they don't want to see you fail. Then you got the TV telling you everything that you can and can't do and what you gotta go do. No wonder nobody goes home and does it. Don't do it, don't participate. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if you go out and you fail spectacularly. Do it anyway. What's the harm? Good Lord. Get back up. Do it again. I want you to foster a mindset that no matter what, you will not quit. I know a lot about quitting. I left my very good home in Washington State in one of the most beloved, picturesque place in the world that I love, Pullman, Washington. It's a hunting and fishing mecca. In my opinion, it's the second most gorgeous place on the planet. It has rolling hills for hundreds of miles, and forests, and fast-moving rivers, and large lakes, elk, deer, everything. Oh, everything I love that can do that. Except opportunity. Nobody pays you to go shoot animals, catch fish, hike around, generally speaking. I left that, all my money came here. I moved here in May, by July I was broke. Just think about that. 750 grand, all this money. Why well, put a university job? I haven't worked in a couple years. I moved out of here, a couple months, I lose everything I have. I thought about quitting. Thought about a bar. Let me tell you, ramen sucks. I still don't eat ramen to this day. <laughs> if I never eat it again before I die, I'm gonna die a happy man. That's like one that's on my bucket list. Never eat fucking ramen again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> not interested. Those little cheap cans of tuna. Oh my god, not interested. Here's what we did: ramen, egg, tuna. That was dinner. That was lunch. If I never eat it again. I thought hard about quitting. It would have been easy to quit. She probably could have gone back and got a job. I definitely could have got my job at Safeway again. No problem at all. It would have had to have been back in 12, 76 an hour, which by the way is what I was capped out at in front of the union. I could have never made another dollar, ever. Be 
be a 32 year old man, 62 year old man. I was capped at 1276 an hour. It would have been really easy to go back. Thank God I moved to Detroit. Because I tell you what, if I was still in Pullman, Washington, I lost all that money. You know what I would have done? I would have gone back. I would have gone back. Would have. Now, only because I put myself, my wife, in a terribly uncomfortable position, in a position where I couldn't fail, I was able to succeed again. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to put yourself in situations where you cannot fail. This does not mean I want you to be reckless. Do not go and quit your job tomorrow. That's stupid. I was stupid. But there's some parts I accidentally did right. I want you to just put yourself in positions where you cannot fail. Do not quit. Do not listen to people. In fact, if you went home and did nothing what I told you to, but starting something completely different, I would consider that success. Yes, sir. On that Facebook, uh, is there, is there a, a certain amount of uh, video time or a certain length of uh, uh, literature that that to coincide with the price? Or? Facebook's free. Right. Even, even when I'm talking about bad affordable? Yeah. And also the ministry work? Yeah, it's free. I want to talk for an hour, you mean three? Yeah. Completely <laughs> free. Great. Now what they're doing is they're selling all your personal information to these same evil corporations I was telling you about, but it is free for you to use, guys. And I do. I do it anyway. Yeah, but even if you have read the photo book, may not be something about the uh it's free. You just need you just need a way to capture video. And if you don't want to do video, take pictures. Yep. Okay. Uh, you don't even need pictures. All you do is type. Yeah, you can do it that way too. All right, 15 minutes of question and answer. Let's avoid the technical. Now, what I want you to think about right now, what's keeping me from going home and doing what I need to do to get ahead of life? Think about that. Do not be embarrassed to answer the question. I am not some sort of genius. I got more lucky than I got right, and then I just didn't do it. And I think those of you are the same. Luck has this odd way of happening when you don't quit. Yes, sir. What typically goes on at your monthly round or monthly meeting? Um, you start at 6, and there's an hour between 6 and 7, because networking is the most important part of our meeting. We network for an hour. We have a speaker, a local expert only, come up, speak about a subject for 30 minutes, Take 15 minutes of questions, we stop, we network again. Food is provided, it's part of that purchase price. It's mostly built around the human interactions. And then we continue and share those interactions online every single day on Facebook. Primarily on Facebook. Most of us are Twitter people. I kind of am, most of them are not. But it kind of continues on Facebook. That's what it looks like. There's never a sale from the front, ever. Small group, 40 to 50 people, that's an incredibly active group. Over 70% of the people there do deals all the time. It's the thing I'm most proud of. I didn't create the meeting for the first timers. I created the meeting for the people doing stuff. Because I knew if the people who are doing stuff kept coming, the first timers would always come. So, next question. Sorry, where is, where is this meeting? Uh, if you go to Detroit Real Estate Renegades.com. All the information you need to know is there. Detroit Real Estate Renegades.com. Yes, sir. I don't know if this might be a technical category here, but uh, what, what strategies do you use to find good deals? So I'm in a different situation than you. I don't do a lot of work. I did a lot of emails and phone calls selling. When I started um, direct mail, one of my favorite ways still is. I don't have to do much of it anymore. I especially like probate. So the guy who was on the probate list whom I did not see. Oh boy, probate's good. Love probate. Um, if you're not doing short sales, you have a problem. There's no one way to get deals. I'll buy off the MLS. I was buying from a wholesaler. <coughs> I was buying off 
probate, I will buy on pre foreclosure, there's a you know, short sale situation, and I will run this. I can play with it. Private sale is my favorite, though. Because if I can get rid of every idiot realtor who would look at me screw up my deal, or some idiot bank who don't know what the deal is, yes. and that's just perfect for me. But I can just go and get exactly for what I want, treat them fairly, do it quickly, and move on. Is that your question, sir? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. She remembers me from back in the day. Back in the day. When I started that starry eyed look in my eyes, I just went to the right? Now I'm checking the shit. Any more questions? Yes, yes, yes. Facebook fan page. Yes. Uh, Google. 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 Yes, sir. You may have mentioned earlier about hard money lending is somewhat drying up. Are there no folks that are looking at just investing in like let's say commercial or apartment complexes and finding a back way out? Yeah, do, do you know Dennis Bassett? No. You gotta come to Renny Dennis. He put together a, um, it's not, it wasn't a true syndicate, but something like a syndicate. And a year and a half ago they bought a Detroit real estate building and every one of those guys comes to our meeting. And basically, he didn't have all the money to do it. So he knew all these people from going to his meetings on Facebook, posted it was available on Facebook, found every person to invest in it from Facebook, and actually bought the clothes on the property. And they got that picture on his Facebook fan page. All privately funded through people he met going to meetings just like these. But let me tell you, when you talk to Dennis, though, he's not a man who mints his words. Man is a waste, I swear to God, man is a waste of second in his life. He's true corporate boy, true and true. Like everything is business all the time. Yes, sir. Alright, you have a question? Are there any good real estate programs around for two years? What part of you're on your own, man? You're gonna you're gonna have team team members come and go. There's gonna be people who have been good to you for years and they're gonna turn around and stab you in the back and steal some shit. <laughs> or quit, or die. You are 100% on your own. You are in charge of your business. Come on, let's go. Yes. So, for those who have been here, how to have those things, the deals, what would be like three steps to tell them when they get started? I just told them the most important part to get started. Okay. <laughs> What's the point of having a property under contract or knowing exactly what a property is worth? If you do not have a way to sell it or fund it. But all right, everything else I talked about was how to sell it or fund it, right? So pick a small area. I would say a square mile or less. Get the newspaper. Take a real estate agent out to lunch. Here's how you find the right real estate agent. Drive around your particular neighborhood. Whoever has the most signs out in that particular neighborhood sells the most real estate there. Show up. Do not give them your normal, I'm going to buy 10 houses a month from you. Give me some information for free. Show up with coffee and donuts. Say, hey, sometime this week, I'd like to take you out to lunch. And I'd like to pay you to tell me about this one square mile and where you see prices at. Once again, would you listen to somebody who said that? Instead of your typical investor saying, you're a real estate agent, you're worthless, talk to me for free for the hope of business in the future. Boy, that's an exciting conversation. <laughs> Especially if you're good at what you do. I won't even have that conversation. I get voicemail like that. I'm like, delete. Email, delete. I don't respond. People are like, you need to respond to everything. No, I don't. He just said, I do not value your time whatsoever. Delete. Do that. That will give you an idea. And you're going to ask them two questions. What stuff selling for finance? What stuff selling for cash? We need to identify the particular kinds of houses. What I love about Detroit is, man, there's only three kinds of houses. Oh, it makes it so easy. You got a bungalow, you got a colonial, and you got the on ranch. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes, sir. Did you ever see a uh, 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 post on Facebook? You mean? Facebook. Did you have grandkids? Post right now. Do you have grandkids? Yes. They probably know more about Facebook than I do. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this question, you can find out. And folks who want to move down the line, uh, uh, a good idea for them to, when they go online and say, well, 
I knew the crowd was really the one that killed me. I'm open It doesn't work like that. It works more like a normal conversation. Like you go to a Christmas party with your friends. Yes. Everybody knows what you do. People have used you and your work is good. And then a new person at work comes into an area and then you say, hey, I need to get somebody to fix that driveway. I don't know if I need to replace it or if I just need to pump it up or whatever. And they'll say, you know, Joe down there, he's been in our neighborhood for years. It works the same way like that. The only difference is it works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Same exact way. There's no magic button. The difference is you can only talk to so many people. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, it's unlimited because it just keeps going. Anyway. Find out what stuff's selling for finance, find out what stuff's selling for cash. Then buy the loan. And then sell that. There you go. Hey, yes, one more question. That's it. Yeah. Is the real estate market improving in your opinion? No. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Yeah, it's better for us. The sad part is, the worse it is for average Joe Schmoes, the better it is for people who know what they're doing. You ever wonder why they keep crashing it? Right. They're still mad you have $10 in their pocket. They're not going to stop until they got it. So, now, how much longer do you expect it? Years. Years? Like how many? I don't know. We'll start recovering when we start accepting what the, the actual real problems are. The only thing that might be different is the Fed might have enough gumption in it to pump one more bubble. I doubt it, but you never know. They're pulling out every trick pony, everything they got. I mean, Greece already defaulted, and nobody's talking about how Greece defaulted. They defaulted. I'm sorry, when your private bondholders take a 90% loss, I think I called that default. But no, we're not defaulting. The euro's fine. Nobody will look at it. Now the corporate raiders are looking to go rape, pillage, and plunder Spain next. <coughs> yeah. You know, they already got Ireland. They just gutted Greece. Cussling everywhere. Italy now is like, hey, lick my autocrat boot, you know, you didn't even elect me. So no, we paying the dollar. The dollar's looking strong now because the euro is swirling the toilet. Right. right, and then if we have a war, if we have another war, it'll be temporary. But yeah, none of this get none of this gets better. Yeah. Can anybody in Detroit get a bank loan? No. No. Alright, you want to talk to me? Um, I'll stay for about 15 minutes afterwards. Please, if, if I get your attention, go home and do one thing tonight. Just one thing that I ask you to do. And then tomorrow, do one more thing. And the following day, do one more thing. If you feel like you need help, talk to the people here, create like a little bit of, did you do this? A little accountability. Because if you just do one thing every day, pretty soon, you're you're going to be making some serious progress. I do not want you to be that 97%. Thank you for giving me your full.